Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, I have come to believe that I am a very patient man. <laughs> Some of you are laughing. <laughs> I'm a very patient man. I can take a lot, except for one thing. And that one thing is, well, music. In particular, there is one thing that actually drives me crazy is when our piano tuner comes and tunes our piano. It causes my teeth to ache and it gives me a horrible headache. In fact, I befriended so much our piano tuner, he actually knows this. And every time he'll, he'll text me on my phone, Patrick Scott, come on over. I'm, over, I'm done with the piano. And like a gullible one, I come on over and he'll say, tell me what this sounds like. <laughs> also, something that drives me crazy when it comes to music is when someone doesn't finish a song. It means chaos in my life. What do I mean? Yesterday morning, I was outside playing with my dog, Aura. Back and forth, she ran, chasing after her tennis balls, until we both stopped in our tracks. For over the fence, the tune floated in our ears. My dog's head tilted in confusion. I guess I did the same thing, for this song went like this, in a whistle.
has everything to do with Peter, James, and John, especially Peter. All three of them were led up on a high mountaintop. But suddenly, Jesus is transformed in front of them. And then, not being enough, two other characters appear. One who's in a fiery chariot, the other one kind of looks like Charlton Heston. Or maybe it was the, hello, my name is Moses, hello, my name is Elijah, stickers on their lapels. Whatever it was, Moses and Elijah appeared talking to Jesus. And then the verse of our text. Verse 4 of our text. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Clearly, Peter and the others had no clue of what was really going on. Some would say that Peter, the reason that he said this particular thing, was that he was nervous, perhaps, Yet I have come to believe Peter is saying the statement is that he could not wrap his head around what was going on in front of him. He wants to clearly define who Moses is. He wants to clearly define who Elijah is. He wants to make sure that Jesus is, but he's really not sure who he is. And so let me, Lord, put up three dwellings so that I can truly understand that Elijah represents maybe the prophets, and that Moses represents the law, and Jesus, I know that you're the Messiah, but I haven't quite figured it out. And so he wants to create these neat and tidy dwelling places for all three of these creatures, these things, these people that are in front of him. But then God speaks, or, man, or actually God interrupts while he is speaking, that Peter is forgetting something. Verse 5, while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And so Jesus then speaks these words. Get up and do not be afraid. And with these words, they left the mountain. Tell no one of the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Now, as post-Easter people, we know what's going to happen when they get down to the bottom of the mountain. We know that resurrection is going to happen, not only for Jesus, but also for us in our faith. For our faith is about not being stuck up on the mountain. Faith is living in, with, and for Christ. Well, out there in the great big earth that God has created with our loved ones and with those who need to hear the story of Christ through your faith. In a dwelling place on the mountaintop, like Peter desires, suggests that we want our faith to be convenient. We want our faith to be, well, by our terms and our rules. So if your faith is like that, you are forgetting the next part. The next part of the song. For if those three people of Elijah and Moses and Jesus are still up on the mountaintop, resurrection would never happen. What Peter forgets is that faith calls us to go forth to be messengers of God's amazing deeds, God's amazing love for your life. So I need you to ask yourself this. Seriously. When was the last time you spoke to someone, whether it be words or deeds or maybe through song or dance or service or whatever it may be, all about God's amazing stuff. About how God is amazing to you. When was the last time that you encountered someone with your faith? If it hasn't been recent, it is time to get out of your dwelling place and then start popping up. Hear and 
there with the story of resurrection and start living and responding to God's amazing grace and love for you, please start on the mountain. But then go to the valleys, to the rivers, to your workplaces, the places that you travel to, your schools, your Bible studies, whatever groups you're in, the hardware store, the doctor's office, the grocery store, the animal shelter, your backyard, and speak resurrection. For that's what God has called you to do. But more importantly, that's what God has called you to be.